Hey everybody, I have been asked to do a quick and easy version of a 3D carving tutorial in vCarve, um, vCarve Pro, Aspire, all of the uh, Vetric products, and that's what we're going to do. So hopefully this will be about a five minute quick overview on how to import a 3D model um, all the way through the carving process. You're not going to see absolutely every option that is out there. There's a ton of stuff, but if you just want to get started, then this is going to be a good place to start. I hope. Just as a caveat, we're going to be using a Jiray bit that I purchased off of Amazon. There it is right there, and I will give you a link to that um, in the links below. So here we go. Let's get started. We're going to create a new file in vCarve Pro, and I'm just going to do this on a standard 24 by 24 by half inch piece of MDF that you can buy at any of the box stores. Uh, so we'll keep our material set up at 24 by 24 by half inch in inches. And we're going to click OK. Now we need to go to File and Import Component 3D Model. And I already have one set up here, sort of. So we'll select that Dolphins STL that I purchased off of Etsy, I think. Etsy or eBay, one of those. And that's going to open up. Now you see it also brings up a new dialog box over here on the left. And if you look at our dimensions, you're going to see that the model size is way too big for the material that we have. So we're going to take that largest dimension and here it happens to be our Y, and we're going to knock that down to 23 inches so it'll fit inside our 24 by 24 inch material square. You'll see because we have our lock XYZ ratio button selected, um, that automatically changed this to match our original ratio, our aspect ratio. So uh, we drop down to 15 inches, and our Z is now 2.7895, and we know that that is much larger than the material that we have. So we're going to uncheck that lock XYZ ratio. We're going to highlight that 2 inch and change that to 0.5 inches. That way it'll match the material that we're going to use and we can use all of that material. We'll click on apply and we're not going to worry about the rest of this stuff. Again, do some homework on your own. You can play with these things if you want to, but for now, that's where we are. We click on OK and that is ready to go. We're going to do one more thing because I want to be able to cut out um, this model. I don't want to have this big wood frame around here, so I want to get rid of all of this exterior stuff. So we're going to click on Dolphins. We're in our Modeling tab, by the way. And uh, we're going to click on this little icon, Create Vector Boundary Around Selected Components. Now you're not going to really see anything when you do that, but trust me, it worked. Um, we'll go back to our 2D view now. And what that just did was it made a vector boundary you can see it in purple there, all the way outside around our model. And we're going to use that as our profile cut uh, so that we can separate the model from the rest of the material as we move forward. So now we're going to come over to Tool Paths, and we're going to go straight to the 3D Finishing Toolpath. Now I'm not going to recommend that you do this with just any bit. Um, this was the bit that I started with and it works really well here, especially if you have material up to about a half inch thick. Any bigger than that, I'd be cautious about skipping over that roughing path. Um, but because we are going to use MDF, it's soft, it's easy to mill, um, we're going to go straight to the 3D Finishing Toolpath. And we're going to leave our thickness at one half inch so that it'll match the material. All of this stuff remains the same. I'm just going to let you copy that over if you choose to or make changes as you need to. We'll click OK. And a couple of things. We'll start with the tool. Again, I am using my, where is it, my Jiray Tapered Ball Nose End Mill. Um, the tapered bit is awesome for this kind of work. I really like it a lot. And uh, these are the feed rates and everything that I have. Be cautious. Do not use my feed rates if your material, or excuse me, if you are using a stock X carve, uh, if your CNC machine does not handle higher speeds, then make sure you use these feed rates and plunge rates that your machine can handle. I can actually go a little bit faster in mine, so I'm going to change that to 165 for my inches per minute. We'll apply that and select OK. So again, I'm going to pin that so that'll stay open for me. We have our Jure tapered ball nose end mill bit selected. Um, by the way, on those, you can get all of these numbers that you need off of either Amazon if you purchase, purchase it there, or on the bit itself, the little uh, plastic box that it comes with has your tip radius and side angle and all of that in there. So we're good there. Now, the machining limit boundary, you have a couple of choices here. Model boundary means just what it sounds like. It's going to uh, carve only 
the model itself and it's going to leave all of the outside material alone. If you want to carve that outside material as well, then you can click on material boundary. And what that's going to do, it's actually just going to knock down all of that outside material to match. So for this one, we're going to click on material, or excuse me, model boundary. We'll leave that there. And for the area machine strategy, we're going to set this to raster and we're going to raster it at a 45 degree angle. And this will be more clear when we actually show the uh, preview. But basically what that means is the tool is going to cut on a 45 degree angle all the way up as it goes on that raster um, strategy. So we're going to calculate that. And it's going to take a few minutes to think because 3D carving takes a little more math. So blah, 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 yada, 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 think, 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 and there we go. Now, if we just left it here, we could actually go ahead and cut it, and we'll say preview tool paths, and that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to do that one more time a little slower so you can see that raster. This is what I'm talking about, cutting on that 45-degree angle. And that just takes some of the load off the bit. Um, it's going to make that uh, carve faster. This is how we avoid doing, doing that roughing path, uh, which is, in my experience, it can cut my carve time almost in half. So we've got that. Let's speed that up again so we can get through that. And now we're just going to do our profile tool path. So let's go back to our 2D view, profile. And we're going to cut all the way through the material. So I've got this set to cut 0.52 inches because I know our material is 0.5 inches. And I'm going to use a 1 8 inch end mill. This is a down cut. It's kind of my favorite. Uh, and click OK. Now you can add t uh, tabs to your tool path. Or you can use the painter's tape and super glue method to secure your material to your waste board uh, either way. But I'm not going to add tabs right now because I want to be able to delete this outside waste material so I can show you what that's going to look like. So those are my settings there. We actually need to select that outside vector so that it knows what to cut. We'll hit calculate. It's going to warn us that it's going to cut all the way through, which is fine because we want to do that. And now we are ready to go. So let's reset our preview. Click on Preview All Tool Paths, and that's it. You're ready to go. Double click on your waste material, and because it's not connected by the tool or the tabs, rather, that stuff can go away. That is it. Beginning to end, that's pretty much all you need to know. Now, I will go through quickly and show these tool paths, um, just because you may not have seen that in the other video. So if you're if you've already seen this, don't worry about it. Uh, otherwise, here we go. We're going to take that tool path and I'm going to rename that and I like to go number one because this is the one I'm going to do first and I'm going to call it Dolphins 3D Giray Tapered Ball Nose and then for the cutout we're going to rename that and it's going to be our second tool path that we run so we'll call that two Dolphin cutout, and I always like to label it with the bit that I'm going to use. So that's going to be a eighth inch down cut and mill, and we can close that out. I'm using an X carve, so when we export these, we're going to go to Save Tool Paths. I'm going to use the X carve as my post processor. I'm going to click on Save Tool Paths, and then click Save. Click number two and click Save Toolpaths and click Save. And that's it. Now all I have to do is import those uh, G code uh, files into my post processor, run those on the Xcarve, and everything should be great. I hope this helps a ton. Again, I will link to that bit below the video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. I hope it was helpful.